um, and Dustin. All right, welcome to Codex. Our speaker today is Boumedien et Toi uh, from uh, Université de, de Utazas. Uh, Professor Etoui studies conference matrices and configurations of subspaces. Today, he will tell us about a survey on complex conference matrices. Take it away, Boumedien. Thank you very much. Good morning and good afternoon for everybody. Thanks a lot for the organizers for inviting me to give a talk in your nice seminar. I would like to speak about some particular square complex matrices, which are called complex conference matrices. And uh, I'm sure that most of people know more that, about real conference matrices than complex conference matrices. So I will start my talk. I will report first on real conference matrices and uh, particularly those of Paley, which are symmetric and uh, also skew symmetric conference matrices. And then I will speak about complex Hermitian conference matrices. Uh, I will give an application of these matrices in geometry, there is a nice application for complex equilibrium tight frames. And then I will report also on complex symmetric conference matrices, particularly those of odd orders, with an application to equiase octinic planes in Euclidean spaces. And I will finish my talk by reporting results on complex skew symmetric conference matrices. And I will close my talk with some open problems. And uh, a complex conference matrix of order N is a matrix with zero on the diagonal and uh, complex numbers of modulus one, which satisfy this orthogonality conditions. In other terms, that means that the rows of our conference matrix are pairwise orthogonal. It is equivalently to the fact that the rows, the columns, excuse me, are also pairwise orthogonal. We know that real conference matrices have been heavily studied in the literature in connection with the combinatorial designs in geometry, engineering, statistics, and then also in algebra. However, complex conference matrices have received considerable attention in the past few years due to their application in quantum information theory and especially in geometry. Two matrices, two conference matrices are called equivalent if one can be brought into other one by simultaneous permutations, permutation of rows and corresponding columns or and or by multiplication of some rows or columns with complex unit numbers. In other words, two complex conference matrices, A and R, A prime, are equivalent if we can find unitary diagonal matrices D1 and D2 and the permutation matrix S satisfying this equality. Here is the two order real conference matrix, which is symmetric. And easily we can see that this matrix is also equivalent to the skew symmetric matrix of order two by, multipl multipl by multiplication of the second row by minus one. For this reason, the two order real conference matrices are considered, we consider that there is, there is just one up to equivalence and uh, we prefer to take the skew symmetric one. Here is the skew symmetric conference matrix of order four, and it is unique also up to equivalence. And uh, it is known from Sylvester that if we consider a real skew symmetric matrix of order N, then by this construction, we can see that the matrix C of order two N is a real skew symmetric conference matrix of order two N. Here is the unique six order real symmetric conference matrix. It is unique up to equivalence also. 
And uh, here is the smallest conference, complex conference matrix of order five, where omega is a third root of unity distinct from one. This is the smallest and simple example of complex conference matrices. Uh, now, I will report the result, results concerning real conference matrices. Questions in the theory of polytopes posed by Coxeter led Pele to the construction of real symmetric conference matrices. Pele in 1933 constructed real symmetric conference matrices with orders a prime power plus one, which has to be congruent to two modulo four, modulo four. And uh, the following necessary conditions for the existence of a real symmetric, respectively skew symmetric conference matrix of order N are known. For the symmetric case, the order has to be congruent to two modulo four and N minus one has to be equal to the sum of two square, the squares of two integers. And in the case, in the case of skew symmetric matrices, n has to be equal to two or congruent to zero module four. What about the converse? The only real conference matrices that have been constructed so far are symmetric matrices of order a prime power plus one, which has to be congruent to two module four. And uh, this was proved by Paley. And uh, here are also other orders for which there exists, excuse, uh, excuse me, a symmetric conference matrix. Uh, these orders, the sum of the square of Q minus one plus one, where Q is the order of conference symmetric or a skew symmetric matrix. This was done by Goethe and Zeidel. And uh, here are all other orders for which there exists also symmetric conference matrices. This was done by Maton. And uh, more recently, here are all the other orders for which we know how to construct real symmetric conference matrices. These are all, at my knowledge, the orders for which we may construct a real symmetric conference matrix. And uh, for the skew symmetric case, we know that we may construct skew symmetric conference matrices with these orders, a prime power plus one, which has to be congruent to zero modulo four. And Williamson, more little bit made later, this was done by Paley and Williamson proved that we, we can construct by some uh, tons of construction, uh, we can also Construct two symmetric matrices with orders a uh, with orders a power of two times a product of these factors, which has to be congruent to zero zero modulo four. And uh, in fact, Derzat, Gertas, and Zeidel proved that essentially there are no other real conference matrices. Precisely, they prove that if we consider any real conference matrix of order n, at least three, then it is always equivalent under multiplication of rows and columns by minus one to a conference symmetric or to a skew symmetric matrix, a conference matrix, according as n is congruent to two modulo four or n congruent to zero modulo four. And uh, in addition, we observe that n must be even. This is not the case for complex conference matrices. It's easy to see that there is no complex conference matrix of order three. Uh, it is a simple calculation. However, we can find such a matrix of order five. Of course, some complex conference matrices of even orders can be easily constructed. If we start with the real symmetric conference matrix, then if we multiply it by I, we also obtain a complex symmetric conference matrix of even order, but easily it's equivalent to the real one. So it's not very important. However, there is only one method to construct complex conference matrices of order of odd orders. Observe now that if we consider a complex Hermitian or a skew symmetric conference matrix, then its order is necessarily even. 
Now I will recall the construction of Paley because we need it in the following. If you consider the Galois field of order prime power, which has which is congruent to one modulo four, and uh, consider chi the Legendre symbol defined by k of zero equals zero and k, k, k of x equal one or minus one, according us x is or on is or not a square in the Galois field. Here are some useful properties of uh, the Legendre symbol. K of minus one equal one. That means that minus one is not a square in this, is a square, excuse me. And uh, K is a multiplicative character. And uh, these property, properties are very useful, uh, particularly if we sum all the K of X when X runs over the Galois field is equal to zero. And now, here is the construction of Paley. Paley constructed the following matrix, zero on the diagonal, and P index alpha beta is chi of A alpha minus A beta, where A alpha are the element of the Galois field. Then Paley, it's easy to see with our properties that the matrix P is symmetric. And if we compute its square, we can see that it is equal to 2k minus 1 times the identity matrix of order 2k minus 1 minus g of order 2k minus 1, where g is the matrix consisting solely with ones. And uh, this equality also uh, was proven by Paley. But Paley obtained this formula uh, by use of the Jacobstal's theorem, which uh, Zakostal used this formulae when he investigated some quadratic forms. He proved that this sum of k, k a times k a plus b, where r n through g f q is independent of b and is always equal to minus one. And now, Paley extended the matrix p of order two k minus one by putting uh, uh, zero on the first corner and G is the 2K minus one times one matrix consisting solely of ones and the matrix P, which was constructed by Paley. Then it's easy to see that C is a real conference, real symmetric conference matrix of order 2K. We have then an infinite family of real symmetric conference matrices. More later, in, the, in 1970, something like that, Goethe and Seidel, for other reasons, proved that any Paley matrix of order 2K, which is a prime power plus one, which has to be congruent to two modulo four, can be brought in the following form. We can assume that the first row and the first column uh, are all ones, and uh, we have this form. And the matrices, matrices A and B are square matrices of order K minus one, and uh, which satisfy the following formulae. These formulae were not used by, by Goethals and Zeidel because their goal was different of mine. And if we use these properties of A and B, we can see that easily if we multiply the matrix B, I, I took the form of, uh, of uh, Goethals and Zeidel, and I multiply here by a complex unit complex number, the matrix B, and here B transposed by its complex by the conjugate of B. So it is not difficult to see using the this formula that our matrix C is a conf complex conference matrix which is Hermitian, which depends on a one complex number number of modulus one. Then we have also an infinite family of complex admission conference matrices of order 2K, which has to be equal to a prime power plus one. And uh, K has to be an odd integer. And uh, these matrices have an application in another problem, the problem concerning complex equilibrium tight frames. Let me recall here what is I, I know that mo most of the people in the seminar know maybe more than me about complex equilibrium tight frames, 
but it's important to recall some facts. If you consider the Hilbert space, which is the complex space of dimension R, then a subset F, which is equal to Fi, is called the frame if uh, there are two constants, C and D, satisfying these inequalities. Whenever C equal D, uh, 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 the two are equal to one, then the set is called a normalized tight or a passable frame. And uh, throughout this paragraph, we use the term NK frame to refer to a possible frame of NK vectors in CK, equipped with the Hermitian product, usual Hermitian product. The red U N over K is called the redundancy of the NK frame. It is well known that any possible frame induces an isometric embedding of CK into CN. Uh, it is denoted by V, and uh, V is linear. We may identify it to an N times K matrix, and uh, the vectors denote the columns of V, the adjoint of V, the missing conjugate. We know from Holmes and Paulson that the NK frame is determined up to unitary equivalence by its gram matrix V times V star, which is a self-adjoint projection of from K. And uh, in addition, if we suppose that the frame is uniform and the equangular, that is the square of the norms of Fi and the modulus of the Hermitian product Fi Fg are constant, then Holmes and uh, Paulson proved that our gram matrix can be put in this form, where Q is a Hermitian matrix with diagonal entries all zero, and of diagonal entries are complex numbers of modulus one, and the matrix Q is called the Zeidler matrix or signature matrix associated with NK frame. And uh, Holmes and Paulson proved that the existence of an equilateral possible frame is equivalent to the existence of a Zeidler matrix with two eigenvalues. So if we come back to our infinite family of complex Hermitian conference matrices, it's easy to see that uh, this is a Zeidler matrix with two eigenvalues. And then for any integer cases that 2k is equal to a prime power plus one, which has to be congruent to two modulo four, then we can construct a 2kk complex equivalent tight frame. These frames are, have redundancy too. However, Zoner constructed in his PhD thesis, q plus one, q plus one over two, complex equivalent tight frames for any odd prime power Q. But I proved that the associated Zeidler matrices of these frames are real symmetric conference matrices or the product by I of real skew symmetric conference matrices. First, we call the construction of Zoner. Consider any odd prime power, Q equal P to the power M, and consider the Galois field of order Q, K is the Lysander symbol, which is a multiplicative character of a GFQ star, and consider P, the additive character defined by this formula, where the truss is a linear mapping from GFQ to FP, which means Z over PZ, defined by this formula. And if we, can, if we note A1, AQ, the elements of GFQ, and uh, if we note B1, B, Q minus one, two, the non-zero squares, and with the prime, with the primes, the non-zero non-squares. And uh, Zonas, in his thesis, constructed the following vectors, X1, X2, and so on, till X, Q plus one. And uh, the problem is that Zonar computed just the absolute value of the Hermitian product of these vectors. And, uh, Based on formula and additive characters, Zona showed that his vectors are unit and that the absolute value of any Hermitian product with k different from L is to always equal to one over the square root of q. And uh, in the following, uh, I, after Zona, recently, I computed exactly the Hermitian product xk, xl. So here are the Hermitian product xk, xl. It's easy to see that we obtain this formula. So how to compute this sum? This is the problem. 
So I consider this sum and the other one with the primes, it's easy to see that this, the sum of these two sums is equal to the sum of P of A alpha when alpha runs in GFQ minus one because you have no zero. And uh, note that the sum of these elements is also equal zero for any character and we obtain minus one. On the other hand, I computed instead of the sum here, I was able to compute the difference of these two sums. And it's easy, no? not very difficult to see that this difference is equal to one over chi of AK minus R AL times the sum of Q of alpha times Psi of alpha when alpha runs in JFQ. However, I have a nice chance. I find this sum in the literature. It was computed by Burns and Evans in 1980, something like that. It turns out that the sum is equal to minus one times M minus one square root of Q if P is congruent to one modulo four and is equal to minus, minus I to the power M times the square root of Q if P is congruent to one minus one modulo four. Then recall that we have the sum of these two sums and we have also the difference. This leads easily to the Hermitian, to the Hermi, to the Hermitian products. Uh, so we can deduce this very easily. Uh, we know the sum of the two and the difference. So we have to sum the two equations and we obtain the results of xk of the Hermitian product xk xl. It's equal to that if p is congruent to modulo four or to this if p is congruent to minus one modulo four. So we can see easily that the absolute values are equal to one over square root of q. And uh, in the first case, so we obtain Paley matrices. And in the second case for some, for, uh, some values of M, we find also the Paley matrices the symmetric and also the skew symmetrics which are multiplying by I simply. So we can consider that zonal frames are not really complex because uh, they are, in the two case, we can see that they are isometric huh, to the real ones. So Zonal's construction does not lead to new complex equilibrium tight frames in comparison with our previous theorem. In the same time, it's interesting to see how Zonal obtained again the Paley matrices using an additive character instead of the legendary symbol, which is a multiplicative character. Now, there is also another remark about these matrices. If you consider a real skew symmetric matrix C of order 2K, then if we multiply it by i, it has two eigenvalues, and then it leads to a 2kk complex equilibrium tight frame. Note that these 2k vectors of this frame generate a set of equilibrium lines which were called in my PhD thesis an F regular 2k tuple in the complex projective space of dimension k minus one. This is a special tuple because these are equilibrium lines, but we have another condition, all the triples of lines has to be pairwise congruent. And now let us turn to complex symmetric conference matrices. If we, we know that Q can be written as 2K minus one, consider omega a complex number of modulus one, a alpha are the elements of the Galois field, always in the case where uh, uh, Q is congruent to one modulo four and define the square matrix zero on the diagonal and the element C alpha beta are equal to omega to the power of Q of A alpha minus I beta. So I, I computed this product and we can see 
that it is two, always equal to 2k minus 2 minus c times identity plus c times g, with c is equal to this quantity. And uh, how I obtained it, I verified, I checked that there is also an analysis theorem of Zerkuster theorem, which depends on the complex number omega. This sum, when R runs through CFQ except zero and minus B, of omega to the power of k, k of A minus k of A plus B, this sum is independent of B and is always equal to k minus two plus k minus one times the real part of the square of omega. And now with this formula, if we consider omega says that the number C is equal to zero, we then obtain a complex symmetric conference matrix. So if we consider omega says that its real part is equal to two minus K over K minus one, then the, mat the matrix, the preceding matrix satisfied to this formula. That means that our matrix is a complex conference matrix of order 2k minus one. And we have then an infinite family of complex symmetric conference matrices. Here are, for example, the five order and the nine order complex symmetric conference matrices. This is the first one I, I, I showed to you before. And here is the second one, which is of order nine. And uh, notice that all these matrices are two valued square matrices, except the zero on the diagonal. And uh, we can precisely define another equivalence relation on the set of complex symmetric conference matrices. If we need that, that uh, they are symmetric, so if, if we multiply by unit complex number in a row, we need to multiply also the corresponding column and the interchange of rows and simultaneous E of the corresponding columns. So with these two operations, we generate a relation called equivalence. And concerning this equivalence, uh, we can see that here for, we have four possibilities to choice omega. So I proved that for any Q is equal to 2K minus one, which is a prime power. And uh, then there exists four complex symmetric conference matrices order Q and all are equivalent. And now I will show you here an application of complex symmetric conference matrices in a geometric problem. Uh, it turns about the notion of equisoclinic planes, which span the Euclidean space of dimension L. Let me first give you an idea. For instance, we are in the Euclidean four dimensional space. And uh, note that if we consider two subspaces of dimension two, that is two planes huh, through the origin then uh, the two planes determine two angles uh, in general position. And uh, whenever the two angles are equal, the planes are called isoclinic. And now we look how many, we look to the following problem, how many planes, how many subspaces of dimension two through the origin are pairwise isoclinic with the same angle. So this notion is due to Lemans and Zeidel. And Demons and Zeidel proved that there exist any quasoclinic planes which span the Euclidean R dimensional space with the parameter lambda. Lambda is equal to the square, to the square of the cosine of the common angle. If and only if one can find the real symmetric matrix of order 2n, which is partitioned into square blocks of order 2 with zero blocks on the diagonal and orthogonal blocks elsewhere whose smallest eigenvalue equals to minus lambda to the power minus one over two, and which has multiplicity two and minus r. Then the same authors pose the problem of finding the maximum number of equiazoclinic planes that can be embedded in RR. For this aim, they propose to find the maximal number V2R that index lambda of equisoclinic planes in RR with the parameter lambda 
that is, of pairwise isoclinic planes with the same angle phi, such that the square of cosine of phi equal lambda. Th that is, now we look for equiasoclinic planes, but with the prescribed angle. Okay, lambda uh, is between zero and one. We excluded the zero and one for simple reasons. And now, if we consider our complex conference matrix, this one, for example, or this one, or uh, in the definition. So we will replace all the zero on the diagonal by, by the matrix, by the zero matrix of order two. And uh, each entry, non-diagonal entry, we replace it by the two order matrix of the symmetry plane, which has angle the argument of the complex number. And then I was able to compute the square of the symmetric matrix S. And I proved that it's equal to 2K minus 2 times the identity matrix of order 4K minus 2. There is two possibilities to prove this formulae. The first possibility I found it was also as before. I needed this following formulae, which uh, which uh, which is similar to to the other one. Well, here we have the plane rotation with angle theta of k chi a minus k i plus b. <coughs> Excuse me. So this sum is independent also of b and is always equal to this. And then we obtain that the square of s is equal to this. And uh, we deduce that S has two Egon values with equal multiplicities. And uh, we obtain the following corollary. If uh, K is at least three such that two K is a prime power plus one, which has to be congruent to two modulo four, alpha non-negative number, then the maximum number of equisoclinic of equiisoclinic planes in the Euclidean space of dimension 2k minus one with the parameter one over 2k minus two is equal to 2k minus one. Thus, we have an infinite family of equiisoclinic planes in uh, Euclidean odd dimensional spaces. For instance, here the first example, that means that in L5, we may construct five planes, which are pairwise isoclinic with angle pi over three, because lambda is the square of the cosine of the common angle, and uh, so on in L9, in L13, and so on. For, for instance, if we now we want to give more examples, we look for odd k, at least three, and the uh, k is more than 51, says that two k is prime power plus one, then we may construct the 2k minus one complex symmetric conference matrix and thus the maximal 2k minus one tuple of excluding place with this parameter in the Euclidean space of dimension 2k minus one, except possibly in these cases. Uh, I will come before to these small cases because uh, if we have a look, if we have a look, these complex symmetric matrices, we can see that there is a link with Paley matrices. We can, we can state the following result. If there exists uh, a Paley mat sym a real symmetric conference matrix of the Paley type of order N, then I constructed a uh, complex con symmetric conference matrix of order n minus one. And now, okay, complex conference matrices are also important in complex Hadamard theory because if we consider a complex conference matrix of order n, then we, we can double the, the size by this formulae to obtain a complex Hadamard matrix of order two n, a matrix of order n with the unimodular entries satisfying this condi orthogonality condition is called complex Hadamard. 
And uh, recently, with Blue Heist and Brem, we generalized the previous results, and we proved that if there exists a real symmetric conference matrix of order n, then we can construct a complex symmetric conference matrix of order n minus one, because notice that there are also other real symmetric conference matrices which are not of the Paley type. And uh, we also constructed other complex symmetric conference matrices, which, which are called dihedral, and which are not obtained by the previous construction. This, this is concerning real symmetric conference matrices. And now, recently, with Maclouf, we constructed also complex skew symmetric conference matrices from which one can deduce also symmetric conference matrices. And these matrices can always be used for our geometric problem. Uh, we extended the uh, construction from Gottes and Zeidel to the complex case. If we consider a complex conference matrix of order N without loss of generality, we may suppose that the first row is uh, co contains once and also the first colon. Here is the matrix, the matrix P, not uh, the Paley matrix. Huh? I noted it just P. Since C satisfies this orthogonality condition, then the matrix P satisfies the following equations. And if we consider the matrix P, T, excuse me, which is defined by this sum of uh, tensor products, then we can easily see that the matrix T is symmetric if we start with the symmetric or skew symmetric matrix P and satisfies the following equations. And uh, easily, the matrix T could be extended to a complex symmetric conference matrix of order the square of n minus one plus one. We also classified all complex conference matrices up to order five. It appears that we have just the, the complex symmetric conference matrix, which I show you before. However, we fully, fully classify the complex symmetric, skew symmetric, and their mission complex conference matrices of order six. And uh, for instance, we proved that if we consider any complex conference matrix of order symmetric conference matrix of order six, we proved that it is necessarily equivalent to the real symmetric conference matrix of order six of the Paley type. And uh, here are some open problems. Can one find other complex conference matrices of order six, which are not equivalent to one of those obtained in our classification? More precisely, for the symmetric case, for the six order, there is just the Paley matrix. For the skew symmetric, we found two, one and its conjugate. For the Hermitian, there is an infinite family which depends on a parameter B, which has to satisfy some inequalities. And uh, here is a very important problem. I hope that one day we will respond to this problem. Can one find the complex conference matrix of order seven? This is the smallest, and smallest order for which the problem is undecided. And uh, finally, can one find a necessary condition on the order N for the existence of complex conference matrix of order N? And uh, here are the papers I used for this talk. Here is the, the paper of Bands and Evans because uh, I used the ghost sum they determined uh, in 1981. Here is the paper of Bilevich. Note that Bilevich was the person who gave the name, who gave the name conference to the real matrices with zero on the diagonal and plus or minus one elsewhere. We, 
which are says that the rows are pairwise orthogonal because they are peers, they are peers in uh, in some special two n terminal networks uh, in conference telephony. Here is the paper of Coxeter who led Perry to the construction of real symmetric and skew symmetric conference matrices. Here is the paper where with the uh, and Brem where we generalized the, the infinite family I obtained. And uh, here is some uh, other articles on equivalent lines in the complex space. Here are some papers on equizoclinic planes in Euclidean spaces. Here is a paper on, on equizoclinic planes in even dimensional spaces. In this paper, I, I uh, proved that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between equizoclinic planes some sets of equizoclinic planes in even dimension, dimensional spaces and equiangular lines in the complex space of dimension, the half of the dimension of the corresponding Euclidean space. Here is a more general paper on uh, equizoclinic space, not, uh, not solely the case of planes, and here is the paper where I find the infinite family of uh, complex conference matrices of odd orders, and then the infinite family of equizoclinic planes in Euclidean odd dimensional spaces. Here is the paper where I constructed the complex Hermitian conference matrices I, I show, showed you before. And here is the last paper on complex symmetric conference matrices. And uh, here is the famous paper of Lemans and Zeidel about the notion of equizoclinic subspaces of Euclidean spaces. And uh, here is the paper of Maton who constructed some real symmetric conference matrices. Here is also the important paper of Pele. And uh, here is a, a chapter of Zeidel on discrete non Euclidean geometry. And here is a, a paper of Ragavarao who studied real conference matrices in statistics. And uh, here is the last paper, at my knowledge, on real conference matrices. Sibiri and Wittmann that obtained, obtained more real symmetric conference matrices where they started with Matton's construction. And here is the paper of Williamson, who constructed the real skew symmetric conference matrices of orders, uh, of orders, a power of two times the product of factors of the type pi to the power alpha i plus one, which have to be congruent to zero module four. And here is uh, the paper of Zonar, uh, of Zonar, and uh, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank all you right. very much. Thank you so much. Uh, so everybody should uh, smash that reaction button like I'm doing here. And if Dustin wants to hit end on the recording,